it's so nice to see everyone who came out tonight to hear these four fantastic authors. And we hope that if this is your first time, you'll come away feeling like you really got to know them because, you know, as as we say, you have a chance to chat with each of these authors in the breakout rooms coming up. Yeah, excellent. So so for those who don't know, um, my name is Karen Dion, and I, along with Hank Philippi Ryan, are the ones that started this uh online author series, The Back Room. We began in um, September, I think, of 2020, and we've now featured 188 authors, which is just, just blows my mind. We have two events a month, and um, we're really, it's, it's going really well. Authors love it, and, and readers love it, so we're just going to keep going for forever if, if we can. So anyway, that's The Back Room. Uh, for myself, I am an author. I write thrillers, psychological suspense that's set in Michigan's Upper Peninsula Wilderness, where I lived for a lot of years. Um, my two novels in that genre are The Marsh King's Daughter and The Wicked Sister. And The Marsh King's Daughter in particular was very well received. It's been published in 26 languages around the world and became a bestseller in several countries. And it's soon to be released as a major motion picture. I'm told the movie is done. It stars Daisy Ridley and... Um, uh, ben Mendelssohn. Um, we also have tonight the, our wonderful authors. Don Bentley is the New York Times bestselling author of the Matt Drake series. And two Tom Clancy, Jack Ryan Jr. novels. So I think that's so fascinating. And I'm looking forward to finding out more about how it is to take up the Tom Clancy mantle. <laughs> uh, Don is a former FBI special agent, a SWAT team member, and an Army Apache helicopter pilot. And his current book is Hostile Intent, which comes out very, very soon, May 3rd in uh, 2022. Kim Howe, KJ Howe, is the internationally best-selling author of the Freedom Broker series featuring elite kidnapper Thea Paris. She has spent seven years researching the dark world of kidnapping to bring authenticity to the page. KJ is also the executive director of the International Thriller Writers, and we all really appreciate the work that she does on behalf of the organization. That's our, that's our favorite place. Travel and adventure are her passions, and she's often missing in action. Greg Hurwitz is the New York Times number one internationally best-selling author of 23 thrillers, including the Orphan X series. His novels have won numerous literary awards and have been published in 33 languages. Greg currently serves as the co-president of the International Thriller Writers. Additionally, he's written screenplays and television scripts for many of the major studios and networks, comics for AWA, DC and Marvel, and political and culture pieces for Wall Street Journal, The Guardian, The Bulwark and others. Greg lives with his Rhodesian Ridgebacks in Los Angeles where he continues to play soccer, frequently injuring himself. And then finally, we have Brandon Massey. Brandon Massey sold his first short story in 1996 to a speculative fiction magazine. Three years later, he self-published Thunderland, his first novel. He sold quite a few thousand copies on his own, such that Kensington Publishing signed him to a publishing contract and republished the novel in 2002. Since then, Brendan has published up to three books a year, which blows my mind, which includes thrillers and vampire fiction and short story collections. No Stone Unturned is his latest suspense thriller. So thank you all for being with us tonight. Okay, so now we're going to go into the fun part of the evening, which is we play a little game of not quite 20 questions. We have official cards with questions on them and so forth. And so we're going to ask the authors a question, each one in turn, in the order that I see you on the screen. And Brandon, that puts you up first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you get the hardest <laughs> question of all. We ask every, every, uh, every event, we ask someone this question. Is your desk messy or tidy? Uh, right now, it's a little bit messy because I was preparing for this uh, event. So I got papers spread all over the place, but normally it's pretty tidy. Pretty tidy. So when you're writing, you keep keep good order and organization going. Absolutely. I try. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think that tells a, a lot about a person. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be one or the other. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Don, what was your favorite book as a child? 
Mm, that's a great question. Um, I loved Call of the Wild. So I, I remember reading that, I think, the first time in middle school and uh, wanting to be able to hitchhike on a train and go up to Alaska and find a dog of my own. So I love that book. That's awesome. Yeah. I think uh, it make it makes a big impression on a lot of kids, boys and girls mm-hmm. both. <laughs> yeah. Kim, when do you feel the most creative? Oh, I definitely in the morning. I, I'm not one of those night owls, sadly. Um, I'm early riser and I love getting to the fiction first thing because I think they say that your subconscious is still um, at work early in the morning before you kind of get engaged in the day and therefore the best time for writing. So you're really able to ignore Facebook and emails and all of that and just get, get at the writing? Emails is tough because I get a lot of them, um, but, but I, I, definitely, I definitely try um, to do it in the morning. Yeah, that's, I'm, I would never be able, I have such admiration for those people who write, you know, midnight to 3 a.m. Like I would fall onto my computer. Yeah, <laughs> so would I, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Greg, what was the title of the first thing you ever wrote? Do you remember it? Willie, Julie, and the case of the buried treasure. <laughs> <laughs> you guys might be familiar with it in which no one says anything everyone exclaims and retorts uh, right fourth grade it has all those like hardy boy action action verbs going on i still have it actually over here on the shelf behind me illustrated in crayon. Oh, that's awesome that's yeah. fantastic yeah so early age you were really hard at it that's awesome um brandon what's one skill that you would love to master? Um, I would actually like to be able to play an instrument. Mm. I, just one of those things I've always wanted to be able to do. I just never really tackled it. I'd love to be able to play the piano. Yeah. Um, do, do you yeah. think you have the talent for it and you just never had the opportunity to learn? Probably don't have the talent, <laughs> but <laughs> I would love to try and just learn to be able to play the basic. Uh, you know, the basic standards. Would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. That would, that would be nice. Then, then you could come to my party and you could play yeah. the piano for yeah, us. Cool. Um, these questions are random, Don. I, I almost think I shouldn't ask you this one because it's what's one thing you've always wanted to try, but you've been too scared to do. And I have a feeling you've done everything and you're not scared of it. I haven't. Actually, you know what? The one thing I would like to try, I have never jumped out of a perfectly good airplane because Helicopter pilots are not quitters. Like when we strap that thing on, we're in for the long haul. There's no just jumping out. So I would like to try and do that. (laughs) Cool. That's nice. And Kim, what's the most adventurous thing you've ever done? Um, Well, I really love adventurous things. Let's see. I would say great white um, shark cage diving in South Africa. Um, I, I'm a scuba diver, you know, Patty certified, and I really enjoy uh, underworld, you know, under the water and um, had the opportunity to go and, and they basically bait the waters and, and try to bring um, the great whites to the cages. So that's very exciting. Yeah. So you get lowered in, into the ocean in among all this bait. <laughs> yes. It's a, you're it's not a bait. Feeling, a very comforting <laughs> feeling. <laughs> Were you terrified? Yeah, my heart was racing, definitely, because um, the <laughs> sharks can actually stick their nose into part of the cage. They do come part way through. And I'm just thinking, you know, who welded this cage? <laughs> and I hope it holds. Yeah, I, I can well imagine that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Greg, do you have any hidden talents? <laughs> I feel like everyone else is like, what's the most amazing thing you've ever done? It's like, I, like for me, yeah, I play the kazoo. I mean, like, it's, I, I'm trying to compete with like Apache, Apache pilot and um, great white shark. Hidden talent. I am a world-class foosball player. All right. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah, it's not. It's yeah. It's just as awesome as uh, scuba diving with great whites for sure. I, so. I think. <laughs> I'm so glad we're opening up all my thriller writing bona fides here. Thank you. Ken. <laughs> okay. Now back to writing, uh, Brandon. Where do you write? Where I'm sitting right now, <laughs> right here in the office. Yeah, yeah. right here. 
Um, well, like, I, I realized that, you know, like over the course of the pandemic, most of us ended up writing from home, but, you know, some like to go out, some like to wander around. So, yeah, we're looking at where the magic happens then, right? Yeah, I'm very much a creature of habit. And here I have all my books and I can shut the doors and the dogs are here. They're sleeping next to me. So it's just a very relaxing mm. place for me to create. Sounds nice. Sounds really nice. What dogs? I have a Datsun and a uh, Maltese, mm, so nice. quite a pair. Um, I had to ask my wife to put one of them away because they'd be fighting. Uh, right? So <laughs> I have like cage matches every night. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm betting on Greg's Rhodesian Ridgeback in that yeah. cage match. Yeah, I, I think they would probably win now. <laughs> yeah, I have three Ridgebacks, and they were fighting one time. I was in a meeting, and my desk is on wheels, and they climbed up on the chair <laughs> and dragged me and the desk all the way across the office until I hit the wall. So <laughs> they're downstairs, but they're, they're so, fun to write with, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's pretty insane. What an what an image. Um, right now, though, we would like to hear your book recommendations. Each author has come prepared to recommend a book that they think is, is fantastic for one reason or another. So, um, Brandon, we'll start with you. So I am recommending Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. And it is a, a, an extremely well-written, it reads like a movie, really. Uh, really just vivid prose great characterization, kept my attention from page one to the very end. So highly recommend it. Fantastic. Thank you. And how about you, Dan? So I am recommending The Handler by M.P. Woodward. So this is his debut novel, and it is freaking fantastic. Um, he was a, he had a naval intelligence background. And so if you love um, those classic espionage stories, like Damascus Station last year, another fantastic debut this is this year's Damascus Station, mm. The Handler. Nice, easy title to remember, too. <laughs> and uh, we'll, we will put these in the chat so that you all can write them down later. Kim, what book are you recommending? Well, I think Brandon has excellent taste in authors. <laughs> My author is the same as his, S.A. Cosby's, but I um, chose The Blacktop Wasteland. I'm a major car enthusiast and the scenes in that the, the, uh, are just unbelievable. And I think they're made for an action movie. Also, it's been a while since I've heard such a unique, fresh voice as Sean's and I can't recommend his books enough. I think you guys will be very happy. Fantastic, thank you so much. And Greg, what book are you recommending? Well, I went old school with Robert B. Parker. I've gone back to reread all the Spencer for Hire books. I'm choosing Looking for Rachel Wallace. Um, one of the things that's amazing that Robert B. Parker did was he took the PI that was so hard boiled and moved him into the real world where we all live. And it's really funny because it's a lot of what I try and do in the Orphan X books is to take a thriller character, but then locate him within the real world. And I didn't quite realize that I was, I was playing with a similar theme um, until I was doing it. And I've gone back to read, I'm rereading all the Spencers in order. They're so just charming and funny and he's just tough and cool. And the topics that he tackles, even though these books are 30, 40 years old, some of them are seem incredibly relevant. Thanks for, for a vote for, you know, some of the older fiction, because we tend to focus on new fiction and yet, you know, those books are so good. And in your case, you know, they influenced us as, as writers now. So that, that's mm -hmm. really awesome. Thank you all. Wasn't that fun? We hope you enjoyed this taste of what a backroom event is like. The best part comes immediately after when the audience is divided into four breakout rooms and the authors visit each room in turn. We'd love to show you what a breakout session is like because these relaxed face-to-face -face conversations between authors and readers are the hallmark of our backroom events. But breakout sessions are never recorded. What's said in the backroom stays in the backroom. Mm -hmm.